Hey guys, Dean here. Today I'm going to show you some tips on how to grow a small YouTube channel. Now, why am I a good person to actually take advice from? I'm actually a YouTuber myself and on a different separate channel, I have nearly 100,000 subscribers. So I know a good deal of how to grow on YouTube. I've consumed a lot of content on YouTube to understand how the formula works and how the algorithm actually performs. So I feel like I have some good knowledge to actually share this genuine and effective to apply to your own situations. And I didn't get to that number of subscribers from showing people how to grow a YouTube channel like you're going to learn in this video. That channel is a completely separate niche in the gaming space which I had to grow from the ground up using these exact different techniques and methods. So rest assured I'm not some kind of fake guru who's just spreading knowledge which I haven't used myself. It's advice from multiple years of grinding and hard work to actually discover what personally worked for me and now I'm going to share it to you guys. So let's begin. So the first step you want to take when you actually start a YouTube channel or if you haven't already done it on a fairly fresh channel is to verify your channel. The reason why verifying your channel is a pretty effective thing which you want to make sure you do is because it unlocks so many more new features in YouTube that you can utilize to your own benefit and gain. The reason for this is because when you first verify your channel, which you do this through the YouTube studio, it's going to ask you for a phone number. So you basically input your own mobile phone number, YouTube sends you an SMS code and then you input that into the YouTube box and confirm it and that will verify your channel and bind it to that phone number. Not only is this just made mainly for security methods so your account doesn't get hacked or breached or makes it harder to get hacked. This is because this also allows YouTube to know that you're serious about your account and obviously when you're binding it to a real phone number they know that you're a real person and not a bot right and that also allows you to unlock certain features which are behind the verification wall. So what I mean by this is for starters you can unlock videos which are longer than 15 minutes and using the 15 minute and longer video format is really important when you want to upload long format videos or if you're doing something like a podcast. So you really need to verify your YouTube channel if you want to make content this longer than 15 minutes. This also allows you to use custom thumbnails, which we're going to go over later in the video, which is really important if you want to increase the chance of people clicking your videos and actually watching them. And also verification unlocks live streaming. Now, I believe live streaming only works if you have 100 subscribers. So that's also behind a further wall, but you do need to verify to actually enable live streaming too, which can also be really good for channel growth and just generally in interacting with your community, depending on what your niche is for your channel and what you're specifically doing. So these are important core features which you need to be able to take advantage of. Now, let's also talk about picking a main niche. So when you make a YouTube channel and you plan to upload videos, you need to pick a main niche that your channel is going to be specifically for and what is going to be categorized under, right? Because you don't want to spread yourself too thin across multiple different niches. Now, you might first experiment with different video styles and formats to first find your niche or find what you're passionate about which is totally fine. But once you see what actually works, try to stick to a main niche or maybe pick one or two niches together that complement each other and they're centered around your own target audience, which you can see from your YouTube analytics once you've had some views. If your target audience, for example, is adults like mine, then you'll see why my certain themes of travel and business combined together works quite well. If you're doing something like gaming, for an example, try to maybe stick to either one game that you do content centered around or maybe one type of games, so maybe survival games or platformer games and do video games around that same kind of standard or niche that people who watch your other videos will still feel like they can connect with and enjoy and have interest in too. For an example, if you go from vlogging to beauty or gaming to some kind of weird business channel, it just really doesn't make sense. That's why my two different channels are separate from each other and have different subscribers. If you do this, your old viewers will feel a big disconnect or they might even forget why they followed you and either just disappear and those subscribers will be there but not mean anything or they might unsubscribe from you which might even be even worse. The next one is use your face and personality which is also quite important. Now this isn't mandatory and it's not really needed to do but it can also increase your channel's interactiveness with your audience okay. I have two channels one for gaming which is the main channel with the highest subscriber count and also this channel which is slightly newer, which I made a few months ago. Now, my main channel for gaming gets a fair deal of monthly subscribers, right? But this channel seems to be growing at a quicker percentage. That's mainly because it's fresh and it hasn't had that quick 
spurt of growth, but also there's other reasons why this is. Why? Because I show my face more on this channel and there's more kind of personality on here and my own personal views and opinions and my own experiences, which people feel like they can connect with more and there's personal value from me to you in that interaction. However, on my main channel, I'm always putting across value in some form by releasing helpful videos, but I don't always have my face on my videos. It's more so faceless commentary, so people can really enjoy the videos and gain value from them, but they don't have that same level of connection, which may mean that they might watch a few videos and then not remember or choose to subscribe. This is why I've actually started to upload certain filler videos or extra videos where it's me with my own face cam on my gaming channel because I realise this can be a good strategy to increase the people who subscribe and who connect more with me personally to enjoy my content. So this can be a really important effective strategy for you to use in your channel. I realise that people feel more of a certain connection to you when you show yourself as an audience and when they connect your personality and know there's actually a face behind the content, they're far more likely to subscribe come back later and basically join your fan base and keep watching your content over and over again. So this is a really important thing to take into mind. But remember, you don't always need to show your face on YouTube or even use your voice. There's different methods on how to make content without putting yourself out there or risking your privacy nowadays. But just remember that it may have an impact on the sustainability and growth of your channel. Next up is another thing which I just can't stress importance on enough, and that's editing your videos effectively and better and continuing to improve in the quality of editing and how you cut your videos. Now for me this wasn't really too much of an issue because I've always been interested in film and directing films. That's my secondary passion and something which I went to college for and I studied how films were paced, edited and basically how the film goes through from start to finish to hook the viewer and it's a very similar method which I've used in my videos to cut them and edit them and make sure they're consumable. Now you need to learn how to edit your videos better whether this is watching a movie or even better consuming a lot of content on YouTube, content which has high view percentages which most likely have high retention and watch time which we'll go over later. Once you watch these videos and see how they're paced and why they're so successful you can emulate this kind of style in your own videos so that yours do really well too. For an example a few different methods could be putting an exciting preview of what's to come later in the video in the first 30 seconds. This is known as a hook and it's really useful to pique your viewers interest at the start and keep them watching so that you can reward them later by showing what actually happens at the end of that cliffhanger. Right, So that's a really good formula to improve watch time and retention throughout your video. Also another thing which some other big YouTubers recommend and also myself is try to change the shot and make frequent cuts. This is because some people might actually have attention deficit disorder and they might get bored very quickly and the general population just have a very low attention span regardless. So making frequent cuts, changing the shot and switching things up maybe every 5-10 to 10 seconds can increase the chance that people are going to stay and watch till the end or at least watch more of your video, which is really important, right? Remember, watch time is actually YouTube's second, along with click-through rate, which we'll talk about later, biggest metric for how YouTube will look at your content and determine whether it's worth promoting. If you have high watch time and audience retention, meaning people stay to watch your video all throughout it, or for a longer period of time, there's more chance YouTube will promote it because there's more chance people will watch the ads and then the platform makes money as well. It's very important as well that your videos are high definition, so HD, so when you edit your videos and render them, make sure they're in high definition. I think you can get away with uploading your videos in 720p nowadays because that's still technically HD. But I think since the quality of YouTube videos are getting better and better and the general amount of quality in YouTube as a general platform is higher, you need to compete with the rest of the content. So I think the bare minimum is 720p. Don't go lower than this. But I almost would go out on a leg and say that uploading in at least 1080p is kind of the way to go now. So always make make sure whatever you upload is very high quality in order to compete. Also, if you film with your phone, at least make sure that it has a decent camera that's watchable and try to, if the camera's not as good, at least try to make the audio better. Sometimes I do film with my phone on this channel when I can't film with this main camera, but I always make sure that I try to film with this microphone wherever possible because the phone audio is not as good as this. Next, we're going to talk about making better thumbnails. So this goes round to the point which I touched on a little bit a few moments ago when I was talking about watch time and audience retention. That's click-through rate and that is where thumbnails really shine. So this is going to be kind of the subsection we're talking about here. So click-through rate is one of YouTube's top metrics it uses to promote your channel and your videos and content. You need, and I stress you need to use Photoshop or learn to use Photoshop or a similar photo 
manipulation or editing tool to make good thumbnails. This is really important because you could be a masterpiece video editor, upload a movie quality video, which is really exciting and fun to watch if you get really good at editing. But if your thumbnail is rubbish or if it's just a small frame from the middle of your video that's not exciting to click, nobody's going to watch it and the video is not going to take off or get anywhere. Okay. To compete in the YouTube modern climate, people have really colorful, vibrant and eye catching thumbnails and nobody's going to click yours if you didn't take the time to make a custom one. It's really important not to be lazy here. Okay. Having more vibrant, professional and clickable thumbnails makes your click through rate go through the roof and go much higher if you know what you're doing and this can take a lot of trial and error but starting from scratch and taking time to repeatedly make the mistakes see what works and learn how to make thumbnails and model them after ones which are successful too which is a good technique will really increase the chance of people clicking your videos and now on the youtube studio you can see the click-through rate for particular videos which shows how much people are clicking them in comparison to the impressions which is the number of people which youtube served the video and it shows what number of these impressions converted to clicks and that's the click through rate so that's important to look at and take into mind when you want to improve your thumbnails but also titles can play into this too which we'll talk about in a few moments now if you can't download photoshop and you also don't want to get it by legal means which i don't promote then you can basically use similar tools for free which have just as powerful tools and are just as good in my opinion so for example you can get paint.net which is basically like microsoft paint but so much better and slightly more professional you can also use gimp which is much more like photoshop it's kind of like a one-to-one -one copy of photoshop basically the same tools i'd really recommend it and it's free you can also use PicMonkey, which i think is free and paid which is like a website and then you can also use a tool like photoshop based web-based called pixlr and i think that website is just as much like photoshop as gimp but it's web-based and it's really powerful too of course downloading an app is also is always going to be better than using a web-based app but i'd recommend pick one of these depending on your budget and keep practicing and get good thumbnails and try to copy other people's or emulate their style if there's work and their videos have a lot of views. That's my only advice for that. The next one is make better titles. So as with thumbnails, titles also boost the click-through rate up, right? Try to make titles that are clickable and that will pique people's interest. Learn how to use clickbait to a certain degree without being completely misleading or overdoing it and try to make the title match to or complement your thumbnail to some degree. Have a look at people's thumbnails in comparison to their titles. Videos with a, lot of, with a lot of views either have the thumbnail answering a question that the title doesn't, but it complements it well, or it still sells the idea of the video in a useful way that's clickable. To get good at this, you just need to have a look at them and compare them and see why they do good and try to do something very similar, right? These two things, thumbnails and titles, are overlooked by a lot of small YouTubers. And for me, I overlooked these for a long time. Whacking out a thumbnail just after you upload a video quickly to get it out really ruins your views trust me it's important to take time to make thumbnails and sometimes if you can plan the title of the video when you think of the concept and then make a thumbnail before you even make the video or before you upload it this can basically maximize your views and the potential of it being successful when you really put thought into it it doesn't matter how good your video is if the thumbnail and the title are bad nobody's watching it next up is using tags and seo aka search engine optimization now now, Mr. Beast is not going to agree with me here. He's been pretty famous to go on the record to say he doesn't believe in tags and you shouldn't bother with them. I completely disagree with him because he's an outlier. He is already very big, so he doesn't need to use tags. And when he makes a channel, he can basically leverage his own face in the thumbnail or his own fan base who is already going to watch it. So he doesn't really need to use search engine optimization to his advantage. Now, I would basically go on to speculate that if he was to start a faceless channel with just his voice or something like that, he'd probably still need to use tags and need to use a few different other strategies. Sometimes people obviously need to use what works for them. So that's my personal opinion though. Trust me, use tags, they're really important, especially for a new channel when you have no social following, when nobody knows you, when you're just throwing stuff out there. You need to basically show YouTube that your video is basically worth to categorize, right? Tags basically show YouTube where your video should be in the search engine and it kind of gives their AI some information that it needs to basically put your video in the right place. So that's why I think tags are really important for you to use. You can use a tool like Rapid Tags for an example. You basically just type in the title of your video and it serves you the best ranked tags based on that title really quickly without doing research. This can be a really good tool 
for starters when you don't know how to search for searchable terms or make your own tags that's a really good free method also TubeBuddy is a tool which I personally use on two channels this channel and my main channel which generates tags based on a certain score so you can see what's popular and also based on relevance to your videos topic and I really recommend this because it has a keyword explorer in which makes things so much easier than doing the personal research myself manually although you can also do that with the keyword explorer too to find specifics so I really recommend using TubeBuddy and I do have an affiliate link you can click in the description below if you want to use TubeBuddy because I really do believe in that tool and I personally use it and I have been doing for more than a year at this point maybe nearly two years and I think it's a good investment every month which has paid off dividends because it helps to get my videos out there use an SEO tool like this if you can't use TubeBuddy and you don't have the money, use a free one like Rapid Tags. Really important. My link in the description gives you a coupon code to get a percentage off when you subscribe to TubeBuddy. It helps me out personally and you get it for cheaper. It's a win-win. Put the tags which you add to your videos in the descriptions too and reiterate them. And I don't mean just paste them or copy and paste them in, into the description because this is actually against YouTube's terms of service. Actually rewrite the tags into legible sentences which make sense and paragraphs which are discussing what your video is about because that's the point of the description, right? To talk about and describe what your video is so YouTube knows where to put it. Obviously to give YouTube more information to make it more popular. So rewrite the tags which you put in the tag section into paragraphs or a description about your video so that YouTube can basically let people find it better. YouTube uses these tags to determine where it belongs and to help serve it to your potential viewers. So this is an important step which I recommend personally don't skip. Next up is playlists, okay? Playlists aren't just some boring thing which are useless. They are actually really useful. This is mainly for when you make a series. So on my main channel, on my gaming channel, I made series of tutorials on how to do certain things and I found that when I put these tutorials into playlists it showed YouTube that this was a series so it would also mean that YouTube would recommend viewers of episode one to go on to episode two number three and vice versa even if they didn't have the episode number in their title this is because it was in a playlist so YouTube recognized it was a series and it recommended people to keep watching through that playlist and that's how I did get a lot of monthly views through these certain series so it's important not to skip over playlists because they're pretty powerful and if people are searching for a specific thing or some tutorials which are grouped together this will allow them to keep watching and binge watching through those which they're looking for so playlists can be really powerful if you have a series such as tutorials of any kind or any type of series create playlists group all those videos together and number them in the title if possible too because that helps you to recommend them in the watch next section of the website and this lets them know that they can push the next part to people who watched the previous one and it helps to bring in more views when someone wants to find something related to it. The last one is YouTube Shorts. Now this is one which I haven't personally been leveraging that much recently and that's mainly just because of time constrictions but YouTube Shorts is really powerful and I would say YouTube Shorts is probably one of the most powerful weapons you can use in your arsenal right now if you want to have any kind of social growth and we'll get on to why that is. So I'd recommend YouTube Shorts for people who want to get subscribers much quicker and reach that 1000 subscribers milestone and requirement which YouTube now needs you to achieve and reach before you get monetization and ads on your channel. YouTube Shorts, I've just seen some crazy growth here because you can make really short well edited viral videos which people are just inclined to subscribe to and watch more of right. A lot of people binge watch this content, it's very watchable, it's very short and compact, it doesn't take much time up in the day so they just want to watch a ton of it and it can be really good to get your name out there if you're a fresh channel. It's not as oversaturated just just yet as you think. It kind of is, but it's still a pretty new thing which you should get on the bandwagon of immediately. So try to use YouTube Shorts and the Shorts feature to leverage new growth in your channel. You're not gonna make money off Shorts because the ad rates are absolutely dire, but they're really good to get a quick boost of subscribers to get into the ad program, which is really important if you want to start making money off the channel and get a few fans to watch your longer form videos, which you upload later. I'd recommend the strategy to be to post a lot of Shorts or a few Shorts while you're uploading long videos. And then also if you want to switch to longer form later and stop uploading shorts, you would have built up your community a little bit from the shorts feature and you've got into the ad program that much quicker than someone uploading long videos. And with shorts, you can upload them and see what works a little bit easier because the videos are really quick, and short, easy to edit, fast to produce and upload. And it gives you a better idea of what's going to be more successful on the platform than spending days or weeks on a longer video and then it doesn't work, for an example. So it's a good thing to experiment with. I think the advantages are quick engagement and the building up of your social following. So shorts are really powerful. Obviously shorts is YouTube's answer to TikTok 
TikTok short form videos. So I'd recommend really leverage those on your channel. These one minute and under quick videos don't really make much money at all because the ad rates are really bad and they can't put long ads on short videos. So you're not going to make any money off this even if you get millions of views. They do have a shorts fund but the amount of people making good money off that is in like 1% or less. You're basically using shorts to get your name and your brand out there and grow up your channel really quick. So there are big benefits to using it. This is mainly for gaining followers and building up your community that much quicker. So that concludes this list on how to build and grow a small YouTube channel and how to hopefully reach 100,000 subscribers, which I've nearly reached myself. And mainly these are all tips which I put into effect or that I really truly believe in. For an example, YouTube shorts, I haven't used too much myself, but I know effectively that it works. But all of these tips, other than that, I've used and applied successfully. So I hope you find value in this video. Make sure to like if you do. If you're a YouTuber and you have any other tips of growth which are missed off this video, do share them in the comments below to help other people out also and subscribe for more useful content like this one for business and travel. Thanks for watching.